Oh, oh, hello, you're here. You're here early. That's brilliant. Welcome to church. Let me explain what's happening. If you're watching this and it's a Sunday morning and you've just seen a countdown on the screen, that means you're watching a YouTube premiere. You're watching it with the rest of the church family. That's what we'd like to happen. This bit is like you turning up to church 10 minutes early. And so for the next 10 minutes, we'll have some notice slides and a song or two to help us prepare for the service, which will start bang on 10.30 a.m. Now, if you're watching this another time, feel free, fast forward 15 minutes into this video to the start of the service. Although you might wanna watch the notices that will be on screen as soon as I finish talking. The notices are repeated, so if you see one set of them, you've seen them all, and they're also at the end of the service. Now, this little counter just here shows you how long is left until our service starts. Thanks for being here. I'll get my tea finished and I'll see you at the start of the service. Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection 
that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you Descended into darkness You rose in glorious life Forever seated high I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe.
Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, the 24th of May, and it's wonderful to welcome you all to Stockton Parish Church. Now, we can't gather in person at the moment, so we've been meeting every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. online here on YouTube. And whether you've been part of SPC for years, or this is your very first Sunday, or you're somewhere in between, you are really, really welcome here today. If you've joined us since lockdown began, please do connect with us on social media. Whilst it's great to meet through this video, we can be much better connected on social media. The details are on the slides before and after this video, but I'm sure you'll find us. Today, I'm going to be speaking about the next part of the Easter story, Jesus' ascension. I might even get out of this room when I'm talking. We'll respond in song, prayer, and with our offering. And as usual, we'll hear what God is doing in our lives through praise reports. Every week, we begin our time together by singing. We sing about God. We sing to God. We sing about all that he has done. We're beginning today with the song, What a Beautiful Name, the Name of Jesus. If you're able to, and you'd like to, why don't you stand the Bible says that there is a day coming when every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. That's every knee, not just those who are followers of Jesus, every knee. One of the saddest things I hear is when Jesus' name is used as a swear word. The name that is above every other name, the name that brings life, the name that brings hope, the name that breaks chains and sets people free. His name is beautiful, it's wonderful, and it's powerful. Father, as we gather in different places, in different rooms, on different devices, would you gather our voices together as one, that we would worship you and declare that you have a beautiful name, the name of Jesus.
Praise reports, short videos of all that God is doing are a great way for us to grow in faith and stay connected. Please will you talk to your online small group leader if you'd like to send one in. And if you're not in an OSG, you'll find details about our OSGs on our website. Here are this week's Praise Report. Hi guys, I am really thankful for my mechanic. I am not thankful for how many times I've had to visit him, but I just really felt like we should bless him, and pray for him, and we have loads of good conversations with him when we go. So last night when he rang me, I was like, is there anything you need? And he said, oh, we like cake. I said, oh, Ruth's just baked cake. So I said, I'll bring you some tomorrow when we come. But I felt like I needed to give him more than cake and I really wanted to share with him about Jesus. And I have talked to him about God a few times, but just felt like, yeah, this is a new time. So I prayed and I took with me Graham Seed's book and I said to him, I've brought this book and I just really feel like you'll like it and it will speak to you. And he said, oh, well, I promise I'll read the book. And when I've read it, I'll let you know. You can give me a lemon drizzle cake. So trade cake for the gospel guys i recommend it bye hi sbc i'm thankful to god for creation and getting out into the hills so we're still in praise reports and i'm jumping back in because i want to give a praise report it's from myself and the whole of the senior leadership team we want to give thanks to god for stephen mitchell Stephen's a volunteer member of our team at SPC. He's the deputy worship team leader. But since we started producing videos for Sunday, he's been our video editor, our music producer. In fact, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without him. Steve, thank you for all that you're doing. We're so grateful for you and we want to give thanks to God that you are part of our team. Folks, if you've got Steve's contact details, would you, in fact, you could do it right now, send him a message to say thank you. Now, I did trick Steve into filming a little explanation of what he does to produce these videos. He has no idea that I'm even doing this and that this is coming up because I've re-edited this morning's video. I hope you enjoy this. So Mark's asked me to put this little video together about why I enjoy and what I like about doing videos on Sunday mornings. What I enjoy doing is getting the footage throughout the week even from WhatsApp, Dropbox, Inbox, however I get these footage and just be able to put them together um, into something for Sunday mornings. I really enjoy being creative and just spending time working on them. I can literally lose hours out with it. What I like about it is seeing the end result. Sometimes it can be overwhelming on Fridays when there's still a lot to do, but somehow, somehow it gets done. And I just like how it all comes together, how on Sunday morning we as a church can just sit down and watch it as a church at the same time. So I hope you like them, hope you're enjoying them and thank you for all your support so far. Stockton Parish Church is the most amazing church that I've ever been part of. We have over 20 nationalities, around 300 people who call us home. Half of our church family are under 30. It's an amazing place with a vision to be a beacon for God's kingdom, shining a light into the world, leading people into a relationship with Jesus and announcing some incredible news. Jesus is returning. The king will come back and he's coming back for his church. And as a church family, we've had some amazing things to celebrate. In the last couple of years, we've celebrated the launch of our Eden team, a dedicated group of people who live alongside the people of Mill Lane, right in the centre of our town, pointing to Jesus with their loving service. We've been designated as a resource church. That's a church that will plant and grow new worshipping communities. We've seen our staff team grow with some fantastic people, all committed to the growth of God's kingdom here on earth. We've also had some really, really tough times, like the death of our beloved Alan, the founder of this current version of SPC. And most recently, we're in a lockdown. We can't meet and be with each other in a way that we're used to. In all of this, we have always tried to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus in the celebrations and in the sad times. He is the one at the centre of all we do and all that we are. And because we've been in such uncertain times recently, 
We've been keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus as we've spent the last few weeks exploring the encounters that the disciples had with the resurrected Jesus. They were in strange, uncertain times as well. We've learned from Mary Magdalene, who was the first to his tomb on Easter morning, the walk that Jesus took to Emmaus with two of his disciples, the locked room, Thomas and his questions, and last week, the barbecued fish. And as we keep following those encounters, we come to a point in those post-Easter days where Jesus' body is no longer on earth. His presence on earth as a human being leaves us. It's called the Ascension because Jesus ascends and we read about it at the end of Luke and the beginning of Acts. Luke 24, verses 45 through 51. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Now before that happened at the end of Luke's gospel, Jesus said something really incredible. Well, to be honest, anytime he says something, it's incredible. I'm hardly ever going to say to you, yeah, don't listen to that bit. Jesus was talking nonsense. Uh, It's always worth listening to. But he says something extra important. But I'll come to that in a minute. Let me give you two reasons why the ascension is really important. The first is, Jesus' body is somewhere. He was present with us on earth. And it's somewhere. His body is somewhere. It went somewhere. He's fully human and was with us on earth. But then his body goes somewhere. He's gone to be in the presence of God. He's enthroned in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And the second reason is that if he is in heaven and he's on his throne, that means no one else is on the throne. Herod isn't on the throne, Pilate isn't on the throne, Caesar isn't on the throne, the Prime Minister isn't on the throne, the President isn't on the throne, I am not on the throne, the World Bank is not on the throne, Jesus is on his throne. And he is the object of all of our worship, all of our adoration, all of our aspiration. Jesus. Do you see how radical and how incredible that statement is? Let's take a look at that bit I said earlier, the extra important bit that Jesus said. It's called the Great Commission, and we find it at the end of Matthew's Gospel. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Jesus gives us a job to do. The ascension marks the job that we've been given to do. The Great Commission, to go and make disciples. It's one of the main things Jesus told us to do, and it's at the heart of who we are as a church, our vision to be a beacon for God's kingdom. But Jesus said one more thing as well. He said that he would be with us. And next week, we're gonna look at how he keeps that promise on the day of Pentecost. This building is special, it's important, and we call it a church, but it isn't his church, because we are his church. Every one of us who recognizes that Jesus is on the throne, every one of us who can say, King Jesus, every one of us who can say, Father, Jesus, 
your kingdom come. The ascension and the great commission mark the first part of the Jesus Church's beginning. And as we journey through these strange lockdown times, we're going to think again about what it means to be his church as we break out of this building and say, heaven come down. Part two of this talk is next week, and I hope you'll come back and join us. We're coming towards the end. Let's pause and let's take up our offering. Uh, This morning, we give back to God out of his abundant generosity to us. 
Let me invite you at the end of the service to go to spcgive.org.uk and you can make a one-off offering there or you can set up a regular uh, amount to give each month. Many of us, myself included, give every month into the church bank account. Let's pause and let's give thanks for all that God gives us. Father, thank you that you pour out your generosity upon us. We cannot outgive you. And through our bank account and through SBC Give, we give back to you as an act of our, our love, as a sign of our adoration for you, as our commitment to partner with you in the expansion of your kingdom. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning. It's my prayer that you've drawn closer to Jesus as a result. Please come back and join us again next week. Let's finish by praying together. You'll see the words on the screen right now. Father, help me to live this week to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning. We'll see you back here on YouTube at 10.30 a.m. next Sunday. Please hang around and watch the notices as they go. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.